you know what? It doesn't really matter which one we're doing because we still have the basic same parts to our thesis or to our research paper. So let's go ahead and look at what these parts are. Let's begin with the title. And our title, of course, is very important for the research paper or thesis, and it should be short, meaning concise. Inside your title, you should identify the variables very clearly and letting the reader see, when they see the title, what are the key variables in this study. So I want to point out here that when we're talking about the title, uh, one idea is you should be concise and you should identify all of the variables you have. And here's an example. In this example, we can see the effect, effect of transformed letters on reading speed. So here we have a very short title. And this title tells us that the variables in this study include transformed letters, that is, some kind of change in the print of the letters. And probably the dependent variable is reading speed. So independent variable here, independent variable, and your dependent variable right here, D, dependent variable, right? So that is a really good title. Why? Because it shows us exactly what is involved in this study. This leads us to another point, which is in your research, the biggest problem students have is they bite off more, they, they, more than they can chew. They take these big topics like why are consumers happy? What makes consumers happy? Uh, what causes cancer? Uh, these are huge questions. In research, actually, our focus is very tiny. And here you can see a great example that it is all the way down to two variables, an independent variable and a dependent variable. That's the way good research is formed, actually. So that's a great way to uh, get an idea. If your title can be simple, it can be simple because your research is simple. And I don't mean simple meaning stupid or basic. I mean simple as in very focused. So that title should explain everything that's in your paper. And somebody can see that title and understand the idea of your paper right from the beginning. Inside your title, don't use abbreviations. You need to spell out everything. So don't use abbreviations or other kinds of shortenings. The length of a title should be between 10 and 12 words, uh, or lower, or lower. Uh, shorter is better. But 10 to 12 is really starting to get the maximum. Don't go over. The title should be case, uh, typed in uppercase when you type it on your, on your word processor. Uh, at the beginning of each word and lowercase inside. So like the title of a book or the title of a movie. Uppercase at the beginning of every word and lowercase inside. The next thing we add is our author's name. And our author's name, or what we often call the byline, the byline. The byline is, uh, where are you from? Who are you uh, institution-wise? Where do you work at? And so the byline is this whole Thing, your name and your institution. So you need to include the name and the institutional affiliations. And when we talk about name, this can become very confusing because, of course, Chinese names and uh, Western European names have different or word order. But in any case, when you write the name, you need to include the first name, the middle initial, and the last name. So in my case, my name is Clyde Alexander Warden, and the name would be Clyde A. Warden, the dot being an abbreviation, Alexander, made short. So middle name shortened to just one letter. And then last name last. First name first, last name last. Do not use informal names or nicknames. So for example, if someone's name is William, you must write William. You would not write Bill. Even though that person may be often referred to as Bill, you should be writing William. Now, of course, there's as with all these rules, things can change. It depends on the journal, depends on, depends on the context. If there was someone whose name is Bill, they always use Bill, they don't use William, well then in that case, you may be using Bill. It is possible that an author may write a research paper, but they don't actually work in a university. Or you may be um, already graduated, but you're not working somewhere yet. In that case, 
you would have to skip the affiliation, but you can use the residence area. So probably a city would be good enough and a country or a state. And the author's names have an order to them. What is the order? The order of the author's names is the first person on that list is the person who did most of the work. So that's called the first author. The second author is the person who did the second most. And the third author did third most. And so on. Sometimes there may be a paper where actually two or more people do the same amount of work. That's a special case. And you will still have to list those names somehow, maybe alphabetical order, but then you have a special note. And the note says, all authors contributed equally to this paper. That's a bit unusual. More than often, more than not, you do have the first author is the person who did the most. In some scientific uh, authors, some scientific papers, especially papers like medical papers and big research, um, in areas like chemistry or physics. You may have many authors, 10, 20, 30, but that is unusual. And in business, humanities usually is just one to a few authors. And so you stick to listing them by contribution. Okay, let's move on to the abstract.